Hey everyone, my seven week bench only program is finally available on my site in the info box below. I left a detailed description of what it looks like and what to expect with it in the description section on my site. Go check it out and enjoy it. Let me know how you like it. The Spoto Press was named after Eric Spoto, who held the bench press world record, the raw world record from 2013 all the way to 2016 of 722 pounds. This was before the days of Kirill benching about 740 and then Julius Maddox benching almost 800 pounds. Even by today's standards, however, Eric Spoto pressed in a super unique way that still makes him my favorite bencher to watch benching, period. The way he would move a weight, even though it's no longer the heaviest weight moved by a raw lifter anymore, it was still moved in such a uniquely explosive way that I haven't seen any other lifter match. It literally looked like he had hydraulic pistons pushing the weight up whenever he'd do a rep, no matter how heavy the weight was. You, he may unrack it, arms might be a little shaky with adrenaline, it may come down kind of fast like it's too heavy for him, and then suddenly, boom, it just goes back up to the ceiling, like literally machinery pushing it up. It was that controlled, fast, and explosive. It was incredible. Now, I don't know if Spoto himself created the Spoto Press, but he most certainly made it famous. If you watch a lot of his videos, you'll see that when he trains, he'll bring the bar down to just above his chest, about an inch, maybe even half an inch from his chest, but he won't let the bar touch his chest. The bar doesn't touch his body at all. It gets suspended about a half an inch over his body, and he holds it there with his arms before pushing it back up to a locked out position. This is by far one of my favorite bench variations to implement into bench training and I think is one of the most helpful variations to really blasting your bench press off. We're going to go over exactly how to do that today and uh, the do's and don'ts and just get into some detail about how to really optimize this motor press. Now, why is this motor press so amazing for benching? I've always preached that people should practice pausing their reps more. I've always said that people fail their, their rep about midway up towards that lockout because they have no power off the chest. They don't practice uh, pausing at the chest, getting that control down at the bottom, and they never build up that explosive strength from a dead stop because they only just do touch and go reps and they use that momentum of the bounce off the chest to help get that bar up the first few inches. So I've only said if you pause, it helps build that control, it helps build that explosiveness off the chest and that speed off the chest and will help you drive to a lockout much better. It builds strength. The Spoto Press takes that up a whole nother notch. So you're going down almost all the way to your chest. And I need to emphasize this guys, if you're Spoto Pressing, you do not want to stop inches above your chest. You should not be able to fit a full fist between the bar and your chest. You want it as close to your chest as possible just without touching. Full range of motion is always best, guys. So go right down to your chest. You should barely be able to fit a finger between that bar and your chest and then you pause it there, really close to your body. The higher off your body that you choose to pause the rep, the less effective and the less helpful spoto pressing is going to be. You're simply not gonna get that much out of it because you're still not going down to the bottom of the rep where you're normally the weakest, and therefore you're not training and building strength at that bottom portion of the rep. You're just doing it in the middle of the rep. So make sure you go all the way down. Another big key is you don't have to pause per se. It doesn't need to be a full one Mississippi pause, but you don't want to just do quick down and up motions. You don't want to just try to reverse the speed immediately like you're doing a touch and go simply without touching your body. If you're not going to do a full pause, you at least want to come to a controlled stop at the bottom. Even if it's for you know a quarter of a second, you want to at least make sure you're controlling it and hitting the brakes and stopping for at least a split second before you push it back up. It should be very, very controlled at the bottom. And like I said, I think uh, giving a small little pause is always a good idea. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to sit there and go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, but just a very quick, complete controlled stop before pushing it back up is the most effective way to do spoto presses, in my opinion. Now going back to why these are so effective, they're effective because they're training that bottom portion of the rep they're training the hardest part of the rep, which is holding it at the bottom and then exploding back up from a dead stop 
because you're not using momentum or bounce anymore, but you're making it even harder now. When you go and pause a normal rep, you're actually allowing your arms and your chest, all the pushing muscles, you're allowing them to rest for a split second. That bar is landing on your chest or your sternum, and even if you're mostly holding it, even if it's a light pause, uh, a light touch pause, you're still kind of taking some of that weight off of your hands for a split second, your body's holding most of the weight for you. It kind of gives you a little bit of a break. And when you're new to pause reps, this break may not make a big difference to you at all because you don't have that explosive strength yet. But if you're familiar with pause reps and you're used to them and you're strong and, and efficient in pause reps, giving yourself a nice long pause can actually give you a nice break. That's why you'll see a lot of us benchers, if we're doing a high rep touch and go stuff, you might see us kind of pause that last rep. It's almost like a way to catch your breath and stamina for a split second before blasting that last rep up. Uh, it's almost like a way of cheating. The Spoto Press eliminates this. When you go down to the bottom, you're down all the way to the hardest part of the rep at the very bottom, right down by your chest, but you're not letting that bar rest on your chest. You are in charge of suspending that bar and all the weight on it with your arms, your shoulders, your chest. All the muscles involved in the press, they have to stay completely contracted and completely activated the entire time, resisting that bar. Down here at the bottom of the rep, my voice just cracked, I'm hitting puberty again, that's how excited I am about spoto pressing. You have to control that weight down here at the hardest part of the rep, where we're all the weakest, and you gotta use all of your muscles to do it. You can't let it rest on your body anymore. This is gonna be so hard. It's gonna make the reps feel a lot harder, especially if you're coming down low and you're pausing or at least coming to a controlled stop. You're not just trying to reverse it really fast. So this is gonna build so much strength and stamina and explosiveness from the bottom of the rep now that when you do go back to a regular pause rep, it's gonna feel like you're cheating because now you're doing the same thing, but you're able to kind of give your arms a break for a second when you touch the bar to your chest before exploding back up. So I highly recommend Spoto Presses, guys, are my favorite variation. I like using lower repetitions for them personally. I'm a big fan of doing like a five by four with them or perhaps a six by three with them. You can most certainly do higher reps. There's no rule against it. Uh, but you just want to make sure that your reps stay clean. If you do start getting fatigued and your form starts slipping up, that can be dangerous. Keep in mind, guys, uh, with efficient variations like this that are more challenging, also comes a potentially higher risk. So if you do let your form slip up, you lose tightness at all, and you're, you're suspending the weight over you at the bottom like this, uh, that could be riskier on your shoulders. If you're dealing with a shoulder injury already, spoto pressing may be a move you don't wanna do right now until you get your shoulder 100% healthy again. In the meantime, you could just simply stick to long pauses or tempo reps. So be very careful. Make sure you're using a rep range where you're not gonna go into grinders or your form's not gonna start breaking down. And uh, make sure your shoulders and everything else are nice and healthy before you start using this variation. Uh, let me know in the comments below, guys, any uh, strength-related topics like this you want me to cover and go over. I'd be happy to make more videos like this. I actually love talking strength stuff. Top of the morning to you and welcome back to present day. We are tending to this pec here and we're not going to the gym so that means no pre-workout, which means morning coffee it is. Coffee is a little weaker in caffeine than pre-workout, of course. I love my caffeine so little trick is these Built Go packets. I've shown you them in the last few videos. They're delicious. 100 milligrams of caffeine in each packet, 50 milligrams of protein. We are going to proteinify flavorify and caffeinify this coffee. We're gonna enhance the energy in this coffee. We're gonna enhance the flavor. No sugar or artificial sweeteners needed in this coffee. And I forgot to mention, this is the chocolate mint flavor. So chocolate mint flavor, added protein and energy. And voila, we now have anabolic, double energized, delicious tasting chocolate mint coffee. Mm. Link for these bad boys is in the description below, guys. Use the code right 20 to get 20% off. Give them a shot. Let me know what you think. I'll keep you updated on more crazy concoctions.